Okay, this is the final video for arithmetic sequence and series. It's going to introduce us to the idea of sigma notation and specifically will have us evaluating sigma notation that represents arithmetic series. So first off, we need to discuss what is sigma notation. First off, it is called sigma notation because this letter here, this symbol, is a capital sigma. which is a Greek letter, and it means sum in mathematics. So what this says to do in words is add up, now let's not, let's not say it that way, let's say this is the sum, that's a better way to put it, from k equals 1 to k equals n of f of k. So what we would do is we would plug in every integer from 1 to whatever n is into this function and then add up all of the results. So let's do a couple of examples. This first example is a relatively easy one. It's only a few terms. So we'll do it the old-fashioned way, which is to plug in all of the values. This says to add up all of the k values from k equals 4 to k equals 7 of 6 times k minus 1. So what that means to do is we're supposed to take 4, plug it in for k, which would be 6 times 4 minus 1. Then we're supposed to plug in 5 for k, 6 times 5 minus 1. Then we're supposed to plug in 6 for k, so 6 times 6 minus 1. Then we're supposed to plug in 7 for k, and we stop at 7 because we were told to add up the numbers from 4 to 7, which would be 4, 5, 6, and 7. From there, we would add those values up, so we need to simplify them. 24 minus 1 is 23, plus 30 minus 1 is 29, plus 36 minus 1 is 35, plus 42 minus 1 is 41. Now I want you to notice, because even this is a relatively simple one, it's a short one, but they're not going to stay that way. So we need a better approach than this. Okay, we don't want to have to write out 13, 14, 25, 348 terms. We want to know a shortcut. So in this case, that sigma notation equals 128. But what I want you to notice here is that this expression here, Okay, 23 plus 29 plus 35 plus 41, that is an arithmetic series. Which means we should be able to use our general equation to find that sum if we know the first term and the last term as well as the number of terms, 1, 2, 3, 4. So we could have done 4 times 23 plus 41 divided by 2. And that's going to come in very handy on the next example. Because if we want to plug in from 9 to 21, that is a heck of a lot of numbers. 5 times 9 plus 6. 5 times 10 plus 6. 5 times 11 plus 6. You can see how this is going to get old real fast when we're not supposed to stop until we get to 5 times 21 plus 6. That is a ton of terms. So we need a better approach. We need a better approach, which fortunately we can easily have one, okay? Notice that f of k is a linear function. That means this is an arithmetic series. So we need to plug in three things. We need to know the first term, which is when k equals the bottom number, 9. We need to know the last term, which is when k equals the top number, 21. And we need to know n, which we have an exact formula for. So the first term, we would plug the bottom number in for k. So that's 5 times 9 plus 6. 
5 times 9 is 45, plus 6 would be 51 is the first term. We plug in the top number for k, and that would give us the last term. 5 times 21 plus 6 is 105 plus 6, or 111. Now, the only other thing we need to do a geometric sequence is the number of terms. Well, as it turns out, for any sigma notation, n is the top number minus the bottom number plus 1. And I hope you're willing to just take my word for it that that will always work. So in this case, n would be 21 minus 9 plus 1, or 13 terms. From there, we are going to approach it as a series problem. Plug in what we know. So we're doing S sub 13, which is 13 times 51 plus 111 divided by 2. And do exactly what we did on the examples in the last video. That's what, 162 divided by 2 or 13 times 81, which is 1,053, would be this sum. It would add up. Now, you could write it out the long way, but man, you're doing a lot of work for that. And it would be significantly faster to approach it this way. That'll do it for arithmetic sequence and series.